Using Seesaw for virtual learning, this is a quick tutorial to help you get started with class settings, home access codes, and setting up class blog. To log on to Seesaw, teachers should use their class link. Students in K-5 can use class link if they are on a laptop. Um, home access code may be easier if they're on a tablet or a mobile device but certainly they can use ClassLink if they've downloaded that app. Pre-K students will have to use home access because they do not have ClassLink. All right when you open up your uh, Seesaw page this is what you're going to see. So your class journal is there in that gray area. You'll see student work and post and any announcements you've put there. You'll see in the blue box the name of the class and again we can't change that. I know it's not optimal. Um, in the upper right hand corner you'll see the wrench which is how you get to class settings. We're going to go to that next. Uh, the journal and the activities are going to be the main things that you use. And even though it says down at the bottom that you can add students, because this class was created by the district, it will not let you add students. If you need to do that, you can start a whole new class. Let me know and I'll provide you instructions on that. So class settings part one. So when you click that wrench, this is what you're gonna see. And again, it looks like you can change that name, but we can't. Uh, make sure your grade level is selected. And this is where under manage teachers, you can add a team teacher or a pair of row. Um, to help the students identify the blog and recognize it as your or Seesaw homepage as yours, you can change the color and you can also change the icon. That kind of makes it fun, it personalizes it. All right, class settings part two. You definitely want to change the student sign-in mode to class mode one-to-one -one devices. While students are at home, they won't be sharing devices, but once they come back to school, you'll want to switch that back. Uh, the home learning access codes, this is where you're going to get them. You can also get them from the journal page. We're going to go over those uh, in more in depth on the next slide. And then the families, you can see I have the circle there crossed out. I would hold off on the families. This is something you can do later, but it may be a little overwhelming at first. I'm going to show you another way that you can easily communicate with parents without overwhelming them. So the ones with the stars there, set them as you like to whatever your preference is. All right, so home access codes. When you click on the arrow, you're gonna get two options, to print codes or to download codes. So the print co codes will give you a PDF and you can send that to parents. The download co codes, um, you would, it actually comes in an Excel format it's not pretty and it doesn't provide directions to the parents. So this is my pro tip. Um, use the PDF version of Home Access. Now, if you're pretty skilled in using and editing PDFs, uh, you can actually separate those pages out into individual pages, save them, and then send them to the families individually. You do not want to send all the codes to all the parents on one email. So uh, an easy way to um, communicate the code and the directions to the parents is go ahead and download that PDF and then take a screenshot of each student's page. You might have to uh, zoom in a little bit or reduce the size to about 75% to get it to fit on the screen to take a nice screenshot. So that screenshot will save as a picture on your computer and then you can email the parents and just add in that picture so they have it all right there. This is what it will look like when you see the home, uh, the home access learning codes. Um, 
it's very clear directions, very straightforward. The parents should be able to fo follow it very easily. All right, so to communicate with parents, um, a way you can do that that may be easier than inviting families right off the bat is to open up that class blog option. Um, the great thing is you can set it so that you approve any post before they're actually seen. So parents can comment, but you approve them before everyone sees them. And you absolutely do not have to approve every single parent comment, okay? Some things you may wanna follow up uh, personally, individually with those parents. So, all right, so um, if you do this, you must use this password, okay? You'll create your blog and make your name, and then you'll choose a URL. So the URL can be pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You don't want a ton of um, letters or words after that. Simply using your, your last name, if it's available, and it will automatically tell you if it is, is a great way to keep it simple. Because on the next setting once you hit the arrow button in the upper right hand corner it's going to prompt you to create that password now you'll see mine and there's barnwell it's probably a little too easy to guess barnwell there but if you add possibly your name your initials uh, a special character or a number afterwards that'll make it a little bit more challenging and a little bit safer for uh, the students all right, so when you've got that all set up, you'll see on the next screen your blog address. And right there is where parents, it's a little globe, it's hard to see, it's a little globe with a grid, but that's where the blog will be and that's where um, teachers, students, and parents can publish there to the blog. So you're going to have a lot of control on this. Um, you're going to be able to put out there on the blog what you want all parents to see. So uh, it is password protected. Be very careful with student work. Um, possibly not all parents will want you to, to share their students' work. So definitely get permission before you do that. But you can definitely share out notes, comments, announcements, all that kind of thing on your blog. All right, so more to come. This is the first tutorial. I didn't want to have a huge tutorial. Um, wanted to make it short and sweet. So the next one coming to you is how to use the activities, which are those assignments you can give to students.